Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to continue discussing propositional logic. In the last video, we started to talk about propositional logic and we defined a number of terms and looked at different ways that we can make propositions. We started by defining declarative sentences. These are sentences that state some fact. For example, the sky is blue. That's a declarative sentence. We also defined propositions. These are sentences, declarative sentences specifically, that have a truth value of either true or false and not both of them. So the sentence, the sky is blue, that is also a proposition. So it's both a declarative sentence and a proposition. For a sentence that is a declarative sentence, but not a proposition, you can consider the sentence, this sentence is false. So if you consider that one, this sentence is false, it cannot have a value of true and it cannot have a value of false. So it is a declarative sentence, but it's not a proposition. And for more information about that example, you can see the last video. And given any proposition, we can assign it a truth value. And the truth value is either true or false. And it has a truth value of true if the proposition is true. And it has a truth value of false if the proposition is false. And we denote true by T and we denote false by F. We also went over atomic propositions and compound propositions. Atomic propositions are just propositions that do not contain any smaller propositions. So intuitively, it makes sense why we're calling them atomic. They are like atoms. Compound propositions, on the other hand, are built from simpler propositions. And in the last video, we started looking at ways that we can build compound propositions. Some things that we can use to connect propositions are conjunctions, disjunctions. We can also use negations to build more complicated propositions. And in today's video, we're gonna look at multiple other ways that we can build compound propositions. And we will also look at their truth tables. So that will be the goal of this video. And we are gonna start with the exclusive or. So given two propositions, P and Q, we can take the exclusive or of P and Q and we denote the exclusive or using the symbol, which is called O plus. So we write it like P O plus Q. And what the exclusive or says in words is that P or Q is true, but not both of them. So for the exclusive or to be true, we can have P true and Q false. We can also have P false and Q true, but we cannot have both of them false and we cannot have both of them true. In other words, exactly one of them has to be true in order for the exclusive or to be true. So let's consider some examples. First, let's suppose that P is the proposition one plus one equals two. And let Q be the proposition, the Lakers beat the Celtics yesterday. P exclusive or Q is the proposition, either one plus one equals two or the Lakers beat the Celtics yesterday, but not both. 
In this specific example, the proposition P, which is one plus one equals two, that has truth value of true, which we denote T. Q has truth value of true, which we denote T as well. And that's because Q is the proposition that the Lakers beat the Celtics yesterday. And that is true. That means that P exclusive or Q has truth value of false denoted F. Why is it false? Well, for the exclusive or to be true, exactly one of P and Q has to be true. So we can't have them both true. We can only have exactly one of them true. So they can't both be true. They can't both be false. We need just one of them, exactly one to be true and one to be false. So now let's consider another example. Suppose that R is the proposition one plus one equals three. So we can see that R has truth value of false denoted F because one plus one is not equal to three. And the exclusive or Q exclusive or R that has truth value of true denoted T. And that's because exactly one of Q and R is true. Q is the true one because Q is the proposition the Lakers beat the Celtics yesterday. And that's true. And R is the false one because R is the proposition one plus one equals three. So now that we saw the definition of exclusive or, and we saw a couple examples, let's do a truth table for exclusive or. So there's the definition again, and we're gonna now do a truth table. So we have two atomic propositions here, P, and Q, and we will have a column for each of them. And then we will have a column for P exclusive or Q. Now we need to list the possibilities for the truth values of P and Q. Since we only have two atomic propositions here, the total number of rows of truth values that we're going to have here is going to be two to the two power, two squared, which is four, four total rows. So we'll have a row that is T and T for true, true. We'll have a row that is true, false, P true, Q false. We'll have a row that's false, true. P false, Q true. And we'll have a row where they are both false. Now we just need to evaluate the exclusive or of P and Q. When both P and Q are true, the exclusive or is false. When P is true and Q is false, then exactly one of them is true. So the exclusive or is true. When P is false and Q is true, again, exactly one of them is true here. Q is the true one now. And that means that the exclusive or is still true. And finally, this last row, when they are both false, P and Q both false, for the exclusive or to be true, recall again, exactly one of them has to be true. But if they're both false, then neither of them is true. So the exclusive or is false. So that's the truth table for the exclusive or. And we can see what's interesting here is that this truth table has two rows that evaluate to false and two rows that evaluate to true. So the same number of rows are false as the number of rows that are true.
Now let's consider another way that we can build compound propositions. And this one is called implication. So again, we have two propositions, P and Q. And we denote the implication, P implies Q by P right arrow Q. So that symbol between P and Q is just a right arrow. The arrow goes from P to Q with the arrow pointing towards the Q. And what does this implication mean? It means in words, if P, then Q. So logically, what does this mean? If P is true, then Q has to be true. If P is false though, then the implication P implies Q, when P is false, for that implication to be true, Q can be true or false. So for, for P implies Q to be true, if P is true, then the requirement is strict for Q. Q has to be true in that case. But P implies Q, if P is false, then Q is free. Q can be whatever it wants if P is false. And in that case, P implies Q will still be true. As long as P is false, P implies Q always going to be true. So let's consider some examples. Suppose that P is the proposition 1 plus 1 equals 2, and Q is the proposition the Lakers beat the Celtics yesterday. So then P implies Q is the proposition. If 1 plus 1 equals 2, then the Lakers beat the Celtics yesterday. If we consider the truth values of the propositions in this example, we see that P has truth value of true, denoted T. Q has truth value of true, denoted T. And the implication, P implies Q, this also has truth value of true, denoted T. And that's because in this case, we have P true. And for the implication to be true when P is true, we must have Q true, and we do have Q true. So that's why the implication is true. Let's consider another example. We'll have R be the proposition one plus one equals three. And we saw on an earlier slide that R is false. It has truth value F. But the implication R implies Q, this has truth value T for true. It is true. And Recall that if the first part, the left part of the implication is false, then the right part can be true or false and the implication will still be true, regardless of the right part, if the left part is false. Here, the left part is false. The left part, this R, R has truth value F. So this implication, R implies Q, it has truth value T regardless of the truth value of Q. And we know Q is the proposition, the Lakers beat the Celtics yesterday. So Q is true in this case. So even if Q was false, the implication would still be true. But Q is true and the implication is true. And as I said, since the left part of the implication is false, the right part can have any truth value and the implication will still be true. So now that we saw the definition of implication and some examples, let's look at a truth table for implication. So again, like the last slide, we have two atomic propositions, P and Q. They each get their own column. And then we'll have a column for the implication, P implies Q. We will list out the possibilities for the truth values of the atomic propositions. It's gonna be the same as we saw on the last truth table. So a total of four rows of truth values 
because four is two squared. And that exponent is the number of atomic propositions. So those are our rows for the truth values of the atomic propositions. And now we can evaluate the truth value for the implication P implies Q. If P is true and Q is true, then P implies Q is true. If P is true and Q is false, then we should look at this bullet right here. P is true, then Q has to be true for the implication to be true. So if P is true and Q is false, then the implication is false. Now we can use the next bullet for the next two lines of our table. If P is false, then Q can be true or false and the implication will be true. So in these two rows, P is false. Q can be anything and the implication will be true. And it's true in both of these rows. So the interesting thing to notice here is that there's only one row with a false. So just one false row. And we can think about what is that like? We saw a truth table in the last video that also had only a single false row. And the truth table that only had a single false row was the disjunction the disjunction truth table. So we'll see why that is in a later video, why we're getting the same number of false rows and the same number of true rows for the implication and for the disjunction. So now let's look at another connector called the biconditional. Again, we have two propositions, P and Q. And the biconditional of P and Q, we write it as P left right arrow Q. When I say left right arrow, I mean an arrow that goes both ways. So we have this arrow, one end of it points at the Q, one end of it points at the P. So this is a biconditional arrow. And in words, the meaning of the biconditional P left right arrow Q, what it means is that P if and only if Q. So if P is Q, sorry, if P is true, then Q is true. And if Q is true, then P is true. So the truth of one implies the truth of the other and vice versa. Another way to say that is the biconditional is only true when P and Q have the same truth value. So let's consider some examples. So the same example we've been looking at, we have P, the proposition one plus one equals two, and Q is the proposition, the Lakers beat the Celtics yesterday. Now the biconditional P if and only if Q is the proposition one plus one equals two if and only if the Lakers beat the Celtics yesterday. And in this example, we can see that P is true. So it's truth value is T because one plus one is two. Q is also true. And so it's truth value is T. And that's because the Lakers beat the Celtics yesterday. And that means that the biconditional P if and only if Q is also true because the truth value of P and Q are the same. So they both have truth value T. So the biconditional P if and, if, P if and only if Q is true. Let's consider another example. Suppose that R is the proposition one plus one equals three. So as we saw earlier, R is false. So it's truth value is F because one plus one is not three. 
And that means the by conditional Q if and only if R has truth value of F, it is false. And that's because P and Q, by which I mean Q and R, Q and R here, they have different truth values. So here, the R, R has truth value of F, and the Q, Q is the proposition, the Lakers beat the Celtics yesterday. Q has truth value of T. So R has truth value F, Q has truth value T, and the biconditional is only true when they both have the same truth value. So this is why the biconditional here is false. And that's what that last bullet says. One of them is true, one of them is false. So the biconditional is false. And now that we've seen some examples for the biconditional and its definition, let's do a truth table. Again, it'll be the same atomic propositions P and Q, same number of rows, same number of columns, but the last column is different now. So we have the biconditional in the last column. We'll list out the truth values, the possibilities for P and Q. We have a total of four possibilities, two squared, and now we can list the truth values for the biconditional. When P is true and Q is true, P if and only if Q is true. When P is false and Q is true, then P if and only if Q is false. When P is true and Q is false, P if and only if Q is false. So both of these false ones, just note that the biconditional has to be false there because it's only true when P and Q have the same truth value. And these rows, the truth values are different. That's why the biconditional is false. However, in the last row, they're both false. P and Q both have the same truth value there. The truth value is F. So the biconditional is true. And that completes our truth table for the biconditional. And one thing you can notice here, which is interesting, is that the number of rows with falses is same as the number of rows with trues. So we have an equal number of falses and trues. There's two of each. And the other table that we saw, which had two falses and two trues, was the exclusive or. And we did that truth table already. So before we finish, let's talk a little bit more about implication. And another word for implication is conditional statement. So a conditional statement, in general, we can write it in the form P implies Q. And when we have a conditional statement, P implies Q, we say that P is the hypothesis and Q is the conclusion. Given a conditional statement, any conditional statement, we can define a few other conditional statements based on the original one. And these conditional statements that we're going to define are known as the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. First, the converse of the conditional statement P implies Q is just Q implies P. So in order to get the converse, you take the hypothesis and the conclusion and you just swap them. So you swap the hypothesis and the conclusion. And that's how you get the converse. The inverse of the conditional statement P implies Q is 
not P implies not Q. So how do we get the inverse from the original conditional statement? We just negated the hypothesis and the conclusion. So that's all we did. We did not swap them, but we did negate them. And that's what the inverse of the conditional statement is. And the last type of conditional statement that we're going to define is the contrapositive. And the contrapositive of the conditional statement P implies Q is just not Q implies not P. And how do we get the contrapositive from the original statement? Well, we just swap and we negate the hypothesis and the conclusion. So we swap them, we swap the locations of the P and Q, and we also put negations in front of them. And that's the contrapositive. And the claim here is that given any conditional statement, you can form its contrapositive and regardless of the truth value of the original conditional statement, the contrapositive must have the exact same truth value. So we're going to see why is that true? And in order to see why it's true, we can again use truth tables. And we're going to use a truth table with the atomic propositions P and Q. So any conditional statement, it's going to have a hypothesis and a conclusion. So we will write our hypothesis as P and our conclusion as Q. We're going to form a truth table here. We're going to consider all the possibilities for the truth values of P and Q. And we're going to show that for each of those possibilities, we get the same truth value for P implies Q as we get for not Q implies not P. Now, in order to evaluate this one right here, it's gonna be convenient to have the truth values for not P and not Q. So we will add a column for not P and not Q as well. And we'll put it before this one. So not P right there, not Q right here, and then not Q implies not P. And now we can build our truth table. And what we're trying to show here is that this column right here is going to give us the same values as this column over here. So these are the two columns that we care about the most. So first we'll list out all the possible truth values for P and Q. So they can both be true. P can be true and Q can be false. P can be false and Q can be true. Or they can both be false. Now if they're both true we saw in an earlier slide that P implies Q is true. If P is true and Q is false, then P implies Q is false. And we saw in that earlier slide that these last two rows are both true. Because if P is false, then the implication must be true because P is the hypothesis. And any implication with a false hypothesis is a true implication. So that gives us the column for the implication P implies Q. Now we're going to do a column for not P. So when P is true, not P is false. When P is false, not P is true. Now we do the column for not Q. When Q is true, not Q is false. And when Q is false, not Q is true. And now it's time to do the column 
for the contrapositive. So the contrapositive not Q implies not P. So here, the not Q in this first row, not Q is F, not Q is false. So the hypothesis in this contrapositive, the hypothesis right here, here's our hypothesis, that's false. The hypothesis is false. And remember, in a conditional statement, whenever the hypothesis is false, then the whole statement is true, regardless of the truth value of the conclusion. So this one is true because the hypothesis is false. Now here, our hypothesis is true. So the hypothesis right here, not Q, it's true right here. And recall for a conditional statement, for a conditional statement to be true, when the hypothesis is true, the conclusion also has to be true. Here, the hypothesis is true. So that means we have to check the conclusion. The conclusion right here in this row, the conclusion is false. So when the hypothesis is true, but the conclusion is false, that means the implication is false. So let's continue. Now we have the third row and not Q here is false. So the hypothesis is false. And remember with an implication, when the hypothesis is false, the implication is true regardless of the conclusion. So this is true. And now we can do the last row. The last row, not P is true, not Q is true. So not Q implies not P, the hypothesis is true, the conclusion is true, so the implication is true. And now we can look at these two columns together. We got TFTT, TFTT, and it turns out we were right. So any conditional statement and its contrapositive must have the same truth value. So we showed that. and we use a truth table. And what we just showed with the truth table, it also shows that this biconditional proposition is always true, regardless of the truth values of P and Q. And we can see that by adding an extra column to the table that we did on the previous slide. And that last column would just have this proposition at the top of it and it would just have four rows and we would just list out the truth values in those rows based on the truth values for p implies q and not q implies not p so we can say that this biconditional proposition is always true regardless of the truth values of the propositions p and q And that brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching.